Hi and welcome to the Vegan Corner. We have literally received hundreds of requests for cinnamon rolls, so as you can imagine, it was just not possible for us not to share with you our recipe for making these popular buns. This is another of those recipes that require minimal work and yet it yields amazing results. So if you are ready, let's get to it! To begin with, pour the water into a large bowl and then add in the vanilla extract, the lemon zest, two spoonfuls of the flour and whisk to properly combine them. Once that's done, add in the yeast and whisk to properly dissolve it. Now add in another two spoonfuls of the flour and whisk again. As soon as the ingredients look properly combined, you can add in all the sugar and the salt and whisk once more. This method will allow not only for the sugar and the salt to get completely dissolved into the mixture before starting the kneading process, but also for the yeast not to come into direct contact with these two ingredients, which are known to slow down its growth rate if used in high concentrations. All you have to do now is to keep adding flour in batches and whisk, and, once the whisk is not good for the task anymore, swap it for a spatula, throw in all the remaining flour at once, and combine the ingredients together into a rough dough. Next, transfer the dough onto a working surface and knead it by hand for about 5 minutes to develop the gluten. At the end of the kneading, the dough should be smooth and soft, but not sticky to the touch. Don't be tempted to add too much flour during this process, because the more flour you add, the tougher the final rolls will be. If using a stand mixer, you can follow exactly the same procedure, but without the need to dirty any whisk, spatula and most importantly, any hand, which is indeed very cool. Once finished, transfer the bowl into a slightly greased bowl, cover it with cling film and place it in a warm place to rise until doubled in size, which should take about 2 hours depending on the quality of the yeast and the temperature of the environment. While the dough is peacefully rising, we can move on and prepare the glaze and the cinnamon mixture for the rolls. For the sugar cinnamon mixture, simply mix the two ingredients together and set aside for later use. For the glaze, place the icing sugar into a bowl, add in the water and stir until you obtain a thick fluid. The thicker the fluid is, the more conspicuous the final glaze will be on the rolls. The thinner it is, the more you'll be able to see the actual rolls through the glaze once they are ready. Remember that you can always add more sugar to thicken or more water to thin, so don't be afraid about stuffing up the glaze. Once the dough has doubled in size, it is ready to be placed back on the working surface dusted with some flour and roll it down into a rectangular shape using a rolling pin. We decided to go for a rectangle that is about 20 by 35 cm in area and about 5 mm thick, or 8 by 14 inches in area and a quarter inch thick. However, it is really up to you to decide how thick or thin you want the layers of the rolls to be. We much prefer to have thin layers of dough interspersed with layers of cinnamon, but if you want thicker layers, feel free to create a smaller and thicker rectangle. Once you have obtained the rectangular shape, brush a thin layer of melted coconut oil or vegan butter on top of it, to make sure that the cinnamon mix will stick to it. Also, make sure not to brush the top 1cm border of the rectangle, which will be needed later on to close the roll. Once that's done, gently spread the cinnamon mixture on the oiled surface, trying to be as consistent as possible, just to avoid making your guests angry because they didn't get enough cinnamon in their roll. To press the cinnamon mix into the dough a little, you can gently pass a rolling pin onto it a couple of times. You can now roll the dough into the final log, trying once again to be as consistent as possible so that you will get nice and even final rolls. Now, you see that clean piece of dough that you didn't brush with the oil before? You can use it to seal the log. To do this, simply brush it with very little water and finish rolling the log to complete the process. The little water used will make the dough stick to itself, hence sealing the log. Now, you might be thinking, how on earth am I going to cut the log into perfect round pieces? The answer is simpler than you think. You just have to use a nylon beading thread or a fishing wire, which is not very vegan, and you'll get the job done effortlessly. Once again, there is no right thickness for the rolls. Some people like them thin, about 1cm or half an inch thick, and others like them thick, about 3cm or 1 inch thick. We went for thicker ones because it is how we like them, and we obtained 15 rolls in total. While you are cutting the rolls, place them onto a baking tray lined with greaseproof paper, or if you prefer, into muffin cases. Once that's done, 
Cover the tray with another tray or with any other object that you feel it is suitable for the task and leave the rolls to rise for another hour, which should be enough for them to double in size once again. 20 minutes before the time has elapsed, preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the rising time has elapsed, uncover the tray with the rolls and bake them for 12 minutes in the preheated oven. As usual, to allow for even browning and cooking, remember to rotate the tray halfway through the cooking time, which, for those of you who are bad at mental maths, means after 6 minutes. I admit that I personally had to use a scientific calculator for this difficult task. Once the time has elapsed, remove the tray from the oven and brush the buns with the glaze. The more care you put into this, the more beautiful the final buns will be. Once this process is complete, stick the tray back into the oven for another minute so that the glaze will dry out and crack on top of the buns, giving them this highly appealing final look. As you can probably imagine, the recipe is complete, and all that remains to be done is the most important thing of all, eating the rolls. And here you can have a pick at the final buns. Despite the complete lack of butter, which is usually a must in this recipe, these buns are still unbelievably soft and just as delicious as any other fat-filled version we have tried before. And since the ingredients to make them are quite easy to find, I wonder why you are still watching the video instead of being in the kitchen preparing. If you enjoyed today's video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up before moving on and subscribe if you haven't already. Many thanks for watching and on to the next video!